I'm Amber. Uh, my name is Scott Yang. Yeah, so um, before we begin, uh, can you all go to the link uh, at the bottom left of the screen? Yeah, so that's what we'll be putting all the resources that we'll be using for the following workshop. Yes. Can you just give them here? Wait. Anyway, you can paste like text. Actually, oh, yes. true. Yeah. Okay. Okay, do give us a minute, we'll give you the tiny URL shortly. Okay, you all will be able to access the uh, Google Drive through the link that we have just sent. Yes, it's tinyurl.com slash sqlightforceasia. Yeah, so um, moving on, we're going to do a quick introduction. Okay, so uh, I shall introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Kok Liang, and uh, I have just recently graduated from uh, Drong Panya JC. Uh, and uh, in a week's time, I'm going to serve a national service, so uh, that's fun. Um, what I do in my free time is, um, I mean, I have other hobbies too, but then uh, one of my interests is in computer science. And um, because of this interest, I have actually taken computing in uh, my O-levels in uh, JC. And um, aside from that, I've also uh, participated in multiple other events, one of it being Building Blocks um, last year. And I've also joined other um, competitions and stuff uh, last, uh, last year uh, while I was still in uh, uh, junior college. And uh, yeah, these are some of the pictures of uh, the events that I've uh, attended last year. Yeah, I shall pass over Amber now to introduce herself as well. Yeah, so hi, I'm Amber. So I'm currently studying in Dunman High as a J2 student. So I'm taking A-levels this year. Yay. So I might also be a computer science geek, just not as intense as Kok Liang. Yeah. And H2 computing is probably my best subject in school. Yes, and I'll be involved in building blocks uh, for this year as well. Yeah, so here are some pictures. So um, as you can see from the top picture, that was me in the computing exam last week. Yes. So um, now we'll be starting with our content. So uh, firstly, please ensure you have the following installed on your laptop, uh, Python version 3 or later, and DB browser for SQLite. So the download links for uh, these two software can be found in the Google Drive folder that we shared earlier. Yeah, so we'll be covering databases and how they work. SQLite 3 in Python, and a hands-on exercise, and finally, the dangers of SQL. So first, I'll be talking about databases and how they work. So firstly, what is a database? So usually, a database is used to store critical data for an organization, like uh, private companies or the government. So for example, you can uh, take the example of an e-commerce store. So they will have a database to store the employee details, product details, as well as purchase details. So basically, in a database, uh, especially for a relational database model, there will be multiple tables, such as the following. Yeah, and that's how the data is stored. So um, in actually, in a relational database model, which we'll be using for SQLite, the tables will actually be linked by um, this thing called foreign keys, which I will explain more later. Yeah. So yeah, each database will consist of one or more tables. And each table will contain data for one type of information. So basically, one entity. So um, the e-commerce store database should contain the employee table, which stores the information about employees, such as um, yeah, their, their roles, their names, all that kind of thing. Uh, the product table, which stores information for the products, and the purchase table, which stores information for the purchases. So one very important concept in uh, databases is normalization. So we won't be going into this uh, during our workshop, but 
in the Google Drive, there'll be links to um, further explain what normalization is. So basically, the main function of it is to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity to make the database more efficient. So in a database, there's this thing called keys. So keys consists of one or more fields. And basically, it, when you have the key, you kind of unlock access to the table. The first key is the primary key. So this will be a unique key, and it's used to identify specific records or data in a table. And this should not change over time. The next key is called the secondary key. So it's basically non-primary fields. And then there's the composite key. So this is basically when one, a singular field is not sufficient to provide a primary key. So this combines two or more fields in a table to form a primary key. And the last one is called a foreign key, which is basically a key, a few in one table that links to another few in another table. Yes. So basically, there are two ways to access the database. The first one is using a pre-made software like DB Browser. So it's actually a graphic interface to work with database and tables. So now um, we'll be opening it up to show you all more. So for um, Windows users, you can just search it in the search bar here. Oh yes, yeah. so um, while we're doing that, in the meantime, uh, for Apple users, you can basically go to your applications folder and yeah, search DB browser there and it should pop up. Uh. So this is basically how the interface looks like. So the first thing you want to do when you open up DB browser is you want to create a new database if you don't have one existing. If you have one already, you can just open it using this button here. Yeah, so we're going to create a new database and we're going to name it store. Yeah, so um, after you create a new database, this edit table definition window will immediately pop up. So this is for you to create your first table, since every database needs to have at least one table. So um, let's start with the product table. And now we're going to add our fields. So the first field we'll be adding is the product index field, which will be shortening to product prod ID. Yeah. So since uh, this will be the unique field for each of our products, we're going to click the primary key function. So as you can see, there are some uh, few constraints here. The first one being not null, primary key, Auto increment and unique. So basically, not now means that the field cannot be empty for every record. And yeah, primary key is primary key. Then auto increment is for like indexes where with every record it automatically goes up by one number. So like one, two, three, like that. Yeah, so you don't need to enter it um on your like manually. Yeah. Then the last one is unique. So it's like every, like no two records should have the same entry for that field. Yeah, so when I click primary key, it actually encapsulates not now and unique. So yeah, we don't need to click those two for our primary key. And then there's this thing called field type. So you can see there are a few types here. So basically, the most commonly used one is integer, text, and real. So integer is basically for whole numbers, while text is for like strings. And real is for numbers with decimal points. Yeah. As for blob and numeric, blob basically means binary large objects, which can store like images and video files. And numeric is for like either like you basically you can store either integers or real in there. Yeah, so we're just going to use integer for product ID. And we're going to add a, a few more fields.
Yeah, so for product price, we actually want to click the real button because like it can cost like 250 or something like that. So you don't want it to be a whole number. Yeah, so the last one will be um, availability of the product. So um, you can see like for every name of the field, I've actually done prod, prod and then basically something else after that, right? So um, actually this is a good this is a good practice because if you have a lot of tables, like some of these um, fields may come up again, so it would be good to specify like which table it's from. Yeah, so for avail, it would be good to change it to prod avail. Yeah, so now we're done creating our table, so we click OK. Yeah, and basically how you add in um, like data into the table is you, is you want to click Browse Data tab here, and then you click New Record. So you can see that the first line immediately pops up. So in order to add data into the new row, right, basically you click the box which you want to add it in. And then there'll be this other box on the right. So you click here, and then you type in what you want to type in. So let's say we're doing one for apples now. Yeah, and then you just click apply. And then you can see it immediately pops up here. So let's just do this for the other fields. So now that I've covered how to like create a new record, right? The next thing we're gonna cover is how to edit an existing record. So you see I've already filled in everything here, right? If you want to update any information, you can just click on it again. And then, yeah, you just edit it in this text box here. And then you just click apply. Then you update automatically. Yeah, so if you want to delete a record, all you need to do is you press any few, you click any few on that specific record and then you and then you click delete record and then it will disappear. Yes. So um actually one function of the DB browser is that you can actually type in your own SQL code here to execute it. Yeah. So um let's say we open up Let's open up an existing database that we have. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of data here, right? So actually, if you already know some SQL code, you can type it into the SQL, execute SQL um, tab here. So um, let's say we want to find everyone who lives in Brazil. So humans is the table name. Yeah, so after you're done typing it, you just click the run button here, and then the data will pop up. Yeah, so um, basically that's how you use DB Browser for SQLite. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so for those people who just came, right? Uh, basically, we have this uh, link here, tinyurl.com slash SQLite Force Asia. So that's where uh, we have all our resources, including the download links to Python 3 and DB Browser. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, uh, as you can tell, the advantages of DB Browser for SQLite is that it's quite intuitive. So like, if when you play around with it, you can kind of figure out on your own how to use it. But one disadvantage is that it's not very flexible in comparison to like typing out Python code to access SQL. Yeah, so the next option will be to use uh, structured query language or SQL. 
So um, this is a form of programming language and is used solely to manipulate table and databases. So yeah, an advantage in comparison to using the DB browser is that it's very flexible. But one disadvantage is, is that it's a bit harder to learn. Uh. So you need to know like how, the lang how, how to use the language. It's like learning a new uh, programming language, basically. Yeah, so any questions so far? Uh, yeah, learning the structured query language. So um, in order to use the structured query language, which we'll be going through today, we'll be using Python 3. So it's a general purpose programming language and it's considered one of the easiest programming languages to start with. So it's used in data science and AI. And it's also used for like stuff like game making. Uh. So there are a few basic commands in Python 3, such as print, uh, the usage of variable names, and importing libraries. So there are a few ways to use Python. So the first being the interactive shell, which I will demonstrate now. Yes. Okay, yeah, so this is the interactive shell. Um, one disadvantage of the shell is that you can only run one line at a time. So like, for example, if I type uh, print hi, the moment I click enter, right, it'll just automatically run the code. Like I can't do any other lines of code. So another way to use Python is basically in the script mode. So this is where you open up a new file, and then you can do things like, Yeah, so basically the first line of code I typed out is to get a response from the user. And then the second line of code is to print what the user has typed in. So when I run this, it'll print, enter something, and then you just enter something like, hello world. Yeah, and then you can return it. Yeah, so this is generally the preferred form of using Python. So the aim for today is to create a database for like a store like Amazon and mess with it to like explore what SQL can do. And yeah, now we're moving to the hands-on exercise portion. Do you have any questions so far? No? Okay, great, let's move on. I'll let Kok Liang take over. Okay, do give us a minute. Test. Okay, so uh, I'll be um, moving you through the hands-on exercise of uh, this workshop. Okay, so we'll move on to our first part of our... Okay, no, before we start, uh, I just want to quickly mention that, um, yeah, do follow closely to what I'm about to show you because um, basically when it comes to uh, programming, um, the things that you type can be very sensitive, meaning if you 
uh, miss a semicolon or like you misspell a certain word. It could make your program do things that um, it's not supposed to or either it just straight up won't work. So uh, it is important that uh, you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, um, either follow closely or if you have experience with this before, then um, yeah, you, you just make sure you know what you're doing. Okay, so now to start out, um, I will be using um, I'll be using a script of uh, the Python, um, which um, Amber has shown you earlier. So um, do create a new file, and then uh, right before we start, um, I would like to save that into um, this folder which I've created previously. Um, it doesn't matter which um, um, folder that you um, insert your Python file into. Uh, as long as um, it's a folder, as long as uh, you do everything in one folder, it will be fine. So over here, I'm going to name my code SQLite with Python 3. Okay. So now you can see that uh, I have this uh, Python file inside this um, folder. And um, this is my script. Okay, so um, yeah, I'll be starting off with the first part, um, which is to import SQLite tree. Now, the reason behind this command is that um, Python on its own actually doesn't really have the capability to mess with um, databases. So by uh, importing this library, what you're doing is basically importing new commands um, into, into Python, which um, will allow you to which will give you the capabilities that you will need to um, to um, add or delete uh, records in your in your database. Yeah. So with that, we can actually move on to the first part of our um, to the actual first commands that we're gonna run. Uh, first of it being con goes to SQ like tree connect. So now what this command is going to do is that it's going to create a variable which is called uh, con, and what it's going to do is that it's going to assign this um, into into this variable, and basically what it's going to do, basically what it's going to do is that it's going to allow you to connect to the database using this variable, and basically um, you do need to include something inside the brackets, and that is actually the name of your database. Now the thing is we don't actually have a database yet because I mean it is a new file, it is a new folder. And um, we don't have a database that's created uh, for this workshop. So we are going to create one from scratch right now. And um, the deal is, um, if you don't have a database yet, you can just add a name here. Like, let's say, for example, I just want um, company.db. OK. So basically, let's say if I want the name of my database to be company, OK. Um, company.db, uh, this will be what I type in as my first command, okay? So um, if I run this, what you'll see is that, okay, um, nothing is printed on the idle, but that's okay, we didn't ask it to print anything. But then what you'll see is that company.db now actually um, shows up in the same folder as uh, your SQLite with Python 3 um, um, script. Now, um, yeah, so basically what, what, this, um, what this command does is that if you have a database already in the same folder as your SQLite uh, with, your, with your Python script, then um, it will directly access that database. But then if none, none with this name exists, then uh, it will just create it on the spot for you. Um, now, of course, because it's just created, there's nothing inside this database yet, but uh, we, we will be uh, including records into it shortly. Okay, so now, um, Yes. Uh, no, this, uh, okay. Basically how SQLite works is that it doesn't connect to any server or anything. Um, I think um, my SQL is the one that connects to a certain server. Yeah, but then uh, for SQLite, it just, um, it works directly in your computer. So you don't even need uh, internet access. You can just run this on the spot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be moving on to the next part of this, uh, work, uh, to next part of this uh, exercise, which is to create. Um, okay, before we can even we can even run any SQL statements, uh, one of the things that we need uh, for um, for SQLite three is this thing called cursor. Okay, so now um, basically, okay, I'll type out the full command first. 
So now this, what this command does is that, once again, it creates a variable. Uh, in this uh, case, it's called cursor. And what it does is that it assigns this into cursor. And basically what this command does is that it creates a cursor. Uh, it creates, um, okay, it's, it creates this thing called cursor, which will allow you to control your database using SQL commands. Um, yeah, and in this case, uh, it will control the database uh, that you have connected to previously, which is company.db. So in this case, uh, cursor, yeah, cursor will allow you to control the database. Okay, so now these are the um, these are the introductory commands that will allow you to start uh, using SQL statements for your database. Yes. Okay. So um, yeah, just to quickly show you some of the important Python commands that you'll need. Um, for this uh, for this uh, portion, um, first of it is um, okay. Um, uh, sorry for the C. Uh, this should actually be cursor. Uh, just point that out. Um, but yeah, uh, cursor dot execute um, the insert SQL command here. Basically, this is used to execute your commands. Basically, let's say if I do uh, create create table SQL command in here, um, then when you run this um, when you run this command. Um, this this um, this Python command will run the SQL command, and then um, yeah, yeah. Basically, this is used to run your, run your SQL commands. Uh. And then um, con dot commit in this context, um, it is used to save the changes that you have made to your uh, database. So let's say after I run a c dot execute um, to um, to create a table, and then I run this. Um, basically, the new created table will actually be saved into the database. It won't automatically do that. So let's say if you actually just do a create table and then you forget to do con commit, actually the new create new table that you created will actually not be saved inside the database. So yeah, it is important that you remember to do this. Okay. So now uh, we will start off um, with our first SQL um, command. And okay. So right now, what I am going to do is um, run my first execute statement. OK. So yeah, um, where you will type in your SQL commands will be in here. And uh, you will have to um, surround your command with um, these uh, double quotations to show that it is a command. Um, now, the thing is, um, normally, yes, what you would use is this double quotation marks. Um, because you know it will allow you to type in your command, whatever it is, right? But um, the thing is, if um, the, the thing about something like this is that, let's say if your command happens to extend to a second line like this, you'll see that um, Python starts to realize, okay, I don't think these are the same command, or rather, they they are part of the same command. So the thing is. Uh, how say Python won't be able to tell that okay this thing is a line. So what what's gonna happen is when Python runs it, this is gonna cause an error, which is not what you want. Um, the way that you want to work around it is to use either um, triple quotation marks, either that or you can use double quotation. Uh, okay, triple single quotation marks, or double or triple double quotation marks. So. Um, yeah, um, that's one way to make sure that you can uh, key in uh, multiple lines in uh, your command. Okay, um, so in this case, you'll be using our triple quotation because the um, the command for create table can be quite long. Um, so we'll be extending it into multiple lines to make it um, neater. Okay, so so our command uh, for creating a table will be create table. And then this is where you include in the name of um, your table. So in this case, uh, I'll be naming my table employees. OK. And then, um, and then after this, you want to um, start a bracket. Um, and then basically, in this bracket, we are going to key in all the names of our columns. Okay, so basically in a table, um, what you need to what you need to tell the uh, the SQL is the name of your table, and all of and the the name of all of your columns and what data type they are going to be. Okay, 
So in this case, you're going to have Okay, sorry. Uh, I shall make this bigger so it'll be easier for you all to see. But uh, yes, okay. So, okay. Yeah, uh, I'll be continuing. Uh, so the first, um, the first, um, yeah, the first table, the first column that I'm going to create is actually the primary key, um, and that would be E M P ID. And um, because it's the ID, we're going to be using um, an integer data type. And of course, um, yeah, so, so to make something a primary key, um, which also auto increments, you just type in the words primary key auto increment. Okay, and then you follow it with a comma because we're going to insert um, additional tables, uh, sorry, additional columns into it. Yeah, so that's going to be our first column. Uh, the next column shall be, um, let's say I want to include the name of the employee that I'm going to uh, add in. So it will be name. And then of course, um, if, it's, uh, if it's a name, it's going to be of a text, um, text data type, okay? Um, just to quickly run along here, H will be, sorry. Okay, so uh, as you have seen, uh, I have created um, three further uh, columns, um, and these, yeah, these are just informations that let's say I want to keep off my uh, employee. So I have uh, H, which is of integer data type, uh, handphone number, which is of a text data type, and birthday, which I'll be keeping in a text data type as well. Okay, so after all of this, uh, very important, your last, uh, your last column should not have a comma, because it's gonna cause an error. And then in the final line, you can just close off the bracket that you have started off over here. Okay, so now with that, uh, you have this whole command. And then, um, yeah, this, this command um, is complete. And then uh, as, uh, as I've said earlier, you'll need to make sure that you do uh, con dot commit to make sure that, um, you know, um, that your new created table is actually saved into the into the database, and then of course a very good um, a good um, yeah good habit to have is to close the file uh, is to close um, this connection once you're done with it to make sure that uh, it doesn't take up um, more resources than it needs to. Yeah. So after this, uh, once you have this um, starting command, you can actually uh, start running it and. Um, to run it, yeah, you click on run, and then you click on run module, or you can just press F5. For me, I prefer pressing F5 because it's much easier. And uh, yeah, once you get into this, uh, then you see, yeah, of course nothing is printed, um, but there's actually changes that's being made into my uh, my company.db. You can't see it because you know there's no easy way to access it through Python, or at least not yet. But uh, if I open up my DB browser, and I actually open up my database from here, uh, you'll see that, um, oh, sorry. Uh, you'll see that um, the table is actually being created over here. So this is my company.db. Uh, the table employees is actually created. And then, um, yeah, of course, um, because we have just created this table, there's no records inside yet. Um, but yeah, you can see that um, the, the columns that we have created are here, amp ID, name, age, HP, birthday. So you can tell that the command ran smoothly and uh, yeah, we can move on to the next uh, part. Hey, no, before that, uh, I want to quickly show uh, something with uh, this create table, which is that this command should really only be ran once because um, let's say if I try to run this command again, right? No, okay, right now, company.db already has a table called employees. Um, if you run this command again, you'll see that it actually caused an error, even though the first time when you ran it, there wasn't an error. Uh, and in this case, it tells you that table employees already exist. 
This is because uh, you are trying to create a table which already exists. Um, so with that, right, um, there's two ways you can go around this. Uh, one way is you can use this thing called a comment. Um, so basically what a comment is, is if you put a hashtag, um, if you put a hashtag followed by anything after that, what you'll do is that um, Python will recognize this and be, okay, I won't run this part of, uh, I won't run this part of my program, okay? So uh, you can comment out, um, you can comment out this part of your, um, you can comment out this part of your program and um, when I run it again, you'll see that, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't cause an error this time around. Uh, sorry. You'll see that it doesn't cause uh, an error this time around anymore, okay? Um, but uh, this, this is only one way to uh, work around it. Uh, another way you can work around is to type in this, uh, this keyword. Yeah, so um, SQL has this uh, ability to check first whether this uh, table exists before it creates it. Uh, so if you type in this uh, command here, uh, it will actually check before this table exists first before it tries to uh, create it. So if you run this, you'll see that, yeah, once again, no error. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, it's good that uh, you include this whenever you do a create table command just in case you know any errors occur. But then, yeah, I guess it's up to it's a bit up to personal preference. So, uh, yeah, okay. So now with that, uh, we'll move on to the next part of our um, hands-on, which is uh, to work on our to to do insert statements. So basically, let's say now I have my table, I have my employee table. Um, now I need to add in names or I need to add in records for uh, our employees. So let's say I have, let's say I have 10 employees. I need to add all of their details into this, um, into this database, into the table. So this is exactly what we're going to do now, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, tell you what, I'm gonna type in the command first so it's easier. Okay, in this case, I'll be using single double quotation marks um, since um, this um, command can be run in one line. Okay, so okay, so this will be uh, the SQL command that I'm running. Um, so yeah, okay. Let me just quickly go through this statement with you. Um, so firstly, there's this insert into part of the um, statement. Um, so this is to tell SQL that, okay, we're going to do an insert. Uh, we're going to insert a record into the database. Okay, then the next part will be employees. Uh, this is the name of your uh, table. So whatever table that you want to insert a record into, you put it here. And then this is where you um, write the columns of um, the, the data that you're going to uh, insert into the table. Okay, uh, yeah, so the, the thing about um, MID is that because this is a primary key and it's already auto-incremented, every time you include a record, um, the database will be able to automatically keep track that um, 
okay, um, this, okay, let's say for example, right, um, this, since this is the first record that I'm inserting into the, uh, into the table, uh, the table can tell that, okay, this is my first um, record, so it's gonna be one. The MID for this record is going to be one. I'll show you uh, in a bit, but basically, all you need to know is that because uh, MID is auto-incremented, um, um, you just need to um, add in data for name, age, uh, handphone number, and birthday. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, um, inside these, um, inside these uh, brackets, you include in the, n the name of the columns that you're going to insert into, okay? Then after that, you follow that by the word values. So uh, you're telling SQL that, okay, these are the values that I'm going to be inserting into the table, okay? And then, yeah, you just follow it by whatever you want to insert into the table. Lah. In this case, uh, it's um, supposedly my, pa my particulars. Um, so yeah, Kok uh, Liang, um, I'm 18, my fake handphone number, and my maybe fake birthday, okay? So um, yeah, so this will be my uh, insert statement. And then let's say if I try to run it, okay, works, and I can check my database through DB browser again, and you'll see that, yeah, um, the record is actually inserted into the table. Uh, and yeah, because uh, it can tell that uh, this is the first record, it will directly assign one into MP ID for this record. Um, and then, yeah, you can see the rest of the information works out just fine as well. Um, and also, just, just to quickly mention, um, whatever um, columns that you uh, assign as a text, um, when you type in the data, you do have to um, wrap your uh, data around with single quotation marks. This to show that it is a text data. When you insert it into the, uh, when you insert it into the table. So, yeah. Um, so after running this uh, command, uh, it will, yeah, it will insert um, the record over here into your table, and yeah, you can see that. So, okay. Now with that, uh, we have one uh, insert. Uh, we have one record inside our table, uh, which is good. But um, we're going to insert about nine or ten more, and uh, of course, I'm not gonna type it all out now. So um, what I do have is a previously um, pre-made um, is a pre-made uh, file, which is actually inside the uh, folder which uh, we have um, um, shown you earlier. So um, this. Um, so inside this folder, go to hands-on exercise, and then you'll see this file called add data. Uh, do go into that, and then you'll see these sets of um, pre-made um, pre um, insert um, commands that we're going to run. Now, if you want, one way you can do this is you use c.execute, and then you run each command separately, but then, um, instead, um, there is a better way to do this, and uh, I'll be showing you uh, very quickly. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, we'll be using this um, this command over here, which is a uh, cursor dot execute script. Um, so these, so basically, what this, how different this is from uh, your normal execute is. Um, okay, let let's say I I quickly show you. Okay, um, give me a minute. Okay, I'll now be uh, pasting the um, commands, um, the pre-made commands into my uh, Python script. Okay, so now let's say I try to run all of my, um, Let's say I try to run all of these insert commands all at once. Um, okay, yeah, the thing, yeah, so the thing about execute is that you can only run com one command at once. So if I try to run it like this, uh, you'll see that, okay, yeah, it will tell you, okay, you can only, one, uh, you can only execute one statement at a time. Yeah, so um, the way to work around that is to actually type in execute script instead. And um, yeah. Uh, one important thing that you should know is that if you try to run multiple uh, SQL commands in one execute script, 
uh, you have to separate them using um, semicolons. Um, so yeah, that's that. And if I try running this now, okay, you'll see that um, yeah, this this works. Um, and if I go into the database again, then you can see yeah, all the records are actually uh, inserted nicely for you. And yeah, once again, you can see that for amp ID, it just automatically increases um, each record amp ID by one for each uh, for each record, so that um, you know each um, each record will have a unique uh, employee ID to it. And yeah, you can see all the data uh, inserted in. Um, just quickly, you mentioned all these people are uh, fake. I uh, created them from an online generator, so uh, yeah, just put that out there. Um, but yeah, you can see all the data inside the table, la, and it's yeah, we'll be able to use this uh, data later on. Um, okay, one thing you want to do uh, when it comes to insert um, insert into statements is that they are similar to create tables in that sense that if you try to in, let's say if I try to run this script again, right? Actually, what you'll see is that it will just insert these um, records again into your database or your table rather because. Um, because it doesn't care whether uh, it's already inside a table or not. So if you do run this command again, you'll have duplicates inside your table. But the, um, yeah, so the, the way that you want to um, um, not do that is to, yeah, once again, just comment out your code. Um, insert into statements actually doesn't really have a if not exist clause. So you can't use that uh, when it comes to insert into statements. So yeah, just comment it out. You won't have a problem with it later on. Okay, so now that we've gone through how to insert our records into your um, table, uh, this is where most of what you use with SQL um, will be at, which is your select statement. So basically, what this select statement does is that uh, it allows you to show certain parts of a table depending on what it uh, do. Yeah, it will show you different um, parts of the table depending on what you tell it to do. So, um, Okay, I shall start off with the most simple, um, most simple of um, select statements. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is um, one of our. Um, one of the ways you can type in a select statement is the most simple one, which is a select star from employees. So um, this basically the format of a select statement is um, is like this. Okay, so uh, first you type in the um, select and then the name of your uh, the name of the columns you want to show, and then um, from and then the name of your table. Now, um, if you want to show all columns, you can just easily use uh, asterisk. Um, Python will be able, to, uh, or rather, SQL will be able to tell that uh, this is um, uh, this is uh, you want to show all the tables. So now, if I okay, now the thing about the select uh, statement is that you can't just select. Um, okay, Python won't be able to show you what you select straight away. You have to print it out yourself. So basically, what it does is that cursor will be able to keep the uh, data that you have collected, but then it won't be able to show it straight away. So um, to be able to print out the data that you selected, um, okay, do just follow along. Okay, so for this command, um, what it does is that it creates a variable called data and then it's going to assign whatever data it can fetch from this cursor into the data variable. So now all your information is stored inside data. You can actually use, um, okay, this is not taught in this workshop because uh, it does get a bit technical, but um, you can copy this uh, command uh, and it should work on your, in your Python as well, okay? Uh, for row in data print. Okay, so um, so yeah, basically, 
to roughly go through, right? Basically, what this does is it just takes every row, every record in um, whatever uh, has whatever record is inside the data, and then it will print out each record row by row. So if let's say I try to run this statement, you'll see that yeah, it prints out all the records from uh, your table. Um, yeah, you just print out all the records from the table, and it will show you every single column as well. Um, yeah, it's actually yeah, it's it's actually pretty simple. And uh, you realize that uh, yeah, by doing this right, you don't even need to use DB Browser to check you know what's inside your table anymore because you can you can simply use uh, this select statement along with the printing to show you what's inside your table. Okay, so we can actually um, change our select statements to from it to do certain things. So like for example, let's say if I just want each. Um, employee's name and birthday, I can actually just specify that, right? If I don't want any other redundant information, I can actually just type in select name, birthday from employees. You run that, and it'll actually just show you all of the um, employees' names and birthdays. Yeah, and without all the other information. Um, yeah, and you can type in other uh, column names as well. Like Let's say if you want each person's name with their age or like their age and their birthday, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, that that's um, one thing you can actually do with a select statement. Um, other things you can do with a select statement um, is actually uh, over here. Oops, sorry. OK. Yeah, so this is the next uh this is the next part of our uh, the selecting. Okay, the thing about um selection is that it can be very it, there's a lot of things you can do, you can change with a select statement. Uh so one of the things you can actually change is um or rather you one of the things you can, one of the things you can include with a select statement is a where clause. So basically what a where clause is is that it allows you to filter out the table, or rather it allows you to filter out um certain for you to print out only certain records. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say if I just want all the records of um, people's names um, who start with an L, all the other records I do not want. So um, this um, this where clause will be what allows you to do something like that. Okay. Um, so let me give you a quick demonstration. Um, I shall start with um, okay. Now let's say uh, I just want um, all the records whose age start with 42, okay? So let's do where, okay? And the way you type this is h, sorry, h equals to 42, okay? So yeah, when you run this command, what you're going to see is that it's only going to print out these two rather than print out the whole table. Um, and yeah, you'll see that yeah, these two records, both of them have H42 on them, and then the rest, they don't get printed. Okay, so yeah, that's one of the ways you can use the where clause. Another way you can use this, actually, is um, there's actually multiple different um, ways you can, uh, yeah. Oh, good question. Um, okay, in a, in a normal uh, Python, okay, when you use um, the e double, like when you use a conditional in Python, right, it's always in double equal signs. But then in uh, SQR, right, they don't uh, really assign anything to anything. So they just use, they use the equal sign as a comparison rather than just an assignment. So um, in this case, um, actually I'm not sure whether using double equals will work. Okay, yeah, using double equals will work as well if you want to, but um, I think it's safer to just keep it to equals, just one equal sign to make it more readable as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah, so the thing is, there are actually multiple different kinds of conditionals that you can use. Uh, one of it is actually equals to. Um, yeah, this is the one that we have uh, just uh, used earlier. And then um, the next one is uh, does not equals to. Um, yeah, basically it just does exactly what you think it does, right? Like, uh, let's say if I just replace um, this with a not equals to statement, we just print out everything that's, uh, whose age is not equal to 42. So instead, these two records are the ones which are omitted 
in your um, in your uh, printing. Okay, and then there's also different other uh, different kinds of conditionals like there's less than, more than. So let's say if I try to use, you know, um, more than, then you get, you know, all of the records which are more than 42. And then if you re do less than, then you get the ones which are less than 42. If you do, you can actually also do, um, you know, less than or equals to, more than or equals to, yeah, those will be, yeah, the different kinds that you can use. Uh, and then, yeah, um, one, important thing, one important thing to take note about um, these conditionals is that uh, you should really only be using them for numerical data types like integer or real because, I mean, it, it kind of doesn't make sense for you to check whether the name is more than a certain name or less than a certain name. So, yeah, this should really only be used for numerical data types. Yeah. Okay, so we'll skip right through this because we have went through this already. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is, um, so now we'll be going on into the next conditional, which is called the light conditional. Um, so basically, yeah, it works similarly to other conditionals uh, like the ones that we have went through earlier. But then the thing is, is basically used for columns containing text data instead of integer data. Um, so, yeah, the thing about this light conditional is that, yeah, it just ch checks whether a text is similar to another text. Um, so an example of SQL command for something like that would be this, um, where you can see the name, sorry, where um, the like, or, or rather the equals or whatever is actually replaced by the word like. And yeah, you can see that, yeah, if I, let's say if I try to run this statement in my SQL, Okay, yeah. Um, so we run a command where name is like Jack Thomas. Uh, you'll just print out the one record where, you know, it's, it's Jack Thomas's name. Yeah, so uh, yeah, right now um, it seems like, okay, you can only, you can like, basically it's like a one-to-one -one match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll be going on into that shortly, yeah. Um, so um, yeah, right now it's just a one-to-one -one match where name is like, Matthew. So it has to be exactly the same um, text. But then the thing is, um, when you move on to the next part, right? Let's say if we just have um, an employee's, um, just part of an employee's name, you don't know the person's full name, right? Um, you can actually still get SQL to return the record. And uh, the way to do that is actually using this thing called wildcard characters. So these wildcard characters are um, basically, they allow you to replace a certain um, certain parts of uh, a string. Um, okay, I, 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 I'll try to show you what uh, I mean by that. Now, let's say if we try to tackle this question, okay, given just part of an employee's name, Tina, how can I get SQL to still return her record? Um, the way that you will do that is, let's say, uh, okay, so I have Tina, but um, now the thing is, I want to check for all the names that start with Tina and whatever after that, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as it starts with Tina, I want you to print it out. So the way you can do that is to use a wildcard character, which is the percentage sign. So this percentage sign um, allows you, basically it can replace one, it can replace zero or more characters. So if let's say in this case, I use the percentage sign here, um, it will, it will uh, let's say if this checks with, um, my first, my first uh, record, which is Lim Kok Liang, you'll see, okay, complete zero match, you know, um, because it starts with Tina, it starts with Lim, okay, then you'll go through, okay, this doesn't match, this doesn't match, this doesn't match, and then you'll come here, and then you'll see that, okay, Tina matches the first part of my string, let's see, what about this? Oh, okay, zero or more characters after that, right? For my, this record, I have six characters after Tina. It doesn't matter what characters those are, as long as it's any number of characters, uh, it can be taken up by this um, percentage sign. So it will be, okay. so this string and this string will have a perfect match, okay? So when you try to run this command, um, what you'll see is that actually, yeah, it does print out the record for Tina Foos. 
yeah. Now, uh, okay, so yeah, this is one of the wildcard characters that you can use. Um, another one you can actually use is, uh, okay, kind of unlikely situation, but let's say if you forget what's the first letter of, um, of this person's name, okay? Like let's say you think it's Gina Fuse instead or something, but you're not sure, okay? Uh, another way, another in this um, situation, you can an, use another wildcard character called um, the underscore. So basically, this underscore will only allow you to represent one character only. Okay. So um, yeah, let's say in this case, I know that the person's name starts with some letter and then Ina Fus. G. Hold on, give me a minute. Okay, so if I use the underscore on the first, then you'll see that um, yeah, once again it just prints out um, it, it just print out the um, yeah, it'll just print out the the one record which fits um, this string. And the thing is, this can only represent one character. So let's say if I if I remove the i, um, this um, running this command will no longer print anything because um, yeah, it, it doesn't fit the uh, select statement anymore. Yeah. So, um, okay, a very interesting way you can use uh, this um, this uh, underscore as well is uh, let's say if you want to find um, someone's um, first part of the name, which is four characters long, okay? So if I want to find uh, all the uh, first, okay, yeah, if uh, their first word in their name starts with four characters, I can do four underscores followed by a space and then a percentage sign, okay? So you can actually use these wildcard characters in very special ways to find exactly what you're looking for. So if you run this command, you'll see that, uh, yeah, you'll just print out all the um, records where, you know, the first word of their name, four, uh, four characters long, yeah. So you have a lot of flexibility with how you use these wildcard characters and that's what makes the light clause very, very versatile, yeah. So we move on to our next uh, next other conditionals. Um, the, okay, the first one being the and uh, conditional. Uh, so basically, this is like how you would use uh, and in English, right? Uh, you know, um, something and something. Um, yeah, so I'll just quickly uh, run through this explanation. Um, now let's say if we try to do uh, a check uh, on uh, on the SQL table, and then uh, we want something to be equal to something. Okay, so we do a check of is one is equal to two, and if a is equal to fair. Okay, in this case, both one is equal to two is false. A equals to fair is false. So when it when it uh, runs through this, it will just um, give you a it will just give you a false result. It means that let's say for that record, right, if the name is equals to one, or, or rather if the h is equals to one and the name is equals to a. Um, this check will just not go through at all, okay? Then, um, in this case, uh, only one of it is true. One is equals to one and A is equals to fair. One of it is true, another one is false. Um, once again, uh, the record will still not be printed because both conditionals need to be true, which is what I show in the next uh, example. So in this case, true and true, um, only when um, both um, conditionals are true, then it will actually give you, it will actually print out the record for you, okay? So to show you that in action, uh, let's say if I still have uh, this name like, um, so you know that this one will already print out um, three uh, records for you, right? So now let's say I add in an additional uh, an additional uh, condition, which is um, let's say if I want to get only all of the um, um, records where the name starts with four characters and um, the and the H is greater or, or rather is less than 45, okay? So if I try to run this, you'll see that um, only two records are actually printed this time around because um, out of the three records here, um, only uh, 46 is not... Uh, is, is, is not less than uh, 45. So you see that, okay, you print uh, these two uh, records 
And uh, these two records are the only ones that satisfy both this and this in the table. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to our all conditional. Um, so basically what this all conditional does is that it's kind of similar to your end as well. Um, and yeah, basically instead of, ju of, of um, just printing our record when only one, uh, when both are true, um, all conditional prints out when both, um, it, when either one is uh, true as well. So let's say when you're looking at this, um, yeah, instead of, um, okay, you compare this to your previous end conditional, right, where, um, where even if only one is true, uh, it still won't print. Um, for your all conditional, it will print even if one of it is false. So let's say if we translate that to this situation over here, okay, now if I replace this with an all statement, what it's going to do is that it's going to print out all the names um, whose um, first word start with four characters, or it will print out, or, or, or if the record has H less than 45, or it can be both. Okay, so if I try to run this command, you'll see that, uh, yeah, this has more records than your previous, um, than your previous um, um, end statement and the uh, other, uh, and like when you only uh, select the records which start with four, uh, four letters. So yeah, for any of these records here, they either start with four, work, four characters or um, H is less than 45. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, the thing about these and all uh, conditionals is that you can actually um, you can actually uh, chain them one after another, and uh, yeah, it could um, result in commands which are very complicated, as you can see uh, on the screen. Um, so these um, conditionals start to become a bit more hard to wrap your head around because I mean. Yeah, you don't you don't exactly know what uh, record this is going to uh, return you. Okay, so um, I think it is important uh, to take note that um, Python actually uh, run or rather SQL actually runs this uh, actually checks through these conditionals um, from left to right. Okay, so let's say yeah you have this kind of uh, SQL command. Um, basically, what you actually do is that um, you will actually check um, your check for this conditional first and this conditional, and then it will evaluate the, uh, you'll evaluate uh, this whole thing. Okay, so basically you'll check whether this is true, check whether this is true, and then it will check whether this is true or false, okay? And then if let's say, uh, yeah, and then, so let's say you have a value here already, and then uh, it will check this one, and then it will check this against this with the all, with the all conditional. Yeah, so um, we can actually try this in uh, our in our Python script as well. Um, let's say if we do this command over here, where we do name like percentage l. Okay. So basically, if I try to run this command here, uh, sorry, uh, okay. Uh, okay, this table isn't exactly the best uh, example you can use to show this because uh, right now uh, we, only have, uh, we only have two conditionals and uh, it only um, filters out one record. But um, the main idea here is basically um, it, will, it will check whether this is true first and whether this is true um, and then um, and then depending on, okay, let's say for example, we check this against the first record, okay? The first record is, um, is this one. Um, if, so when name is like uh, L, basically this, basically if there's a capital L anywhere inside your, um, inside your string, uh, it, will, um, it, will, it will be true. So this will be considered true. This um, will be considered true for the first uh, record as well. So true and true will return you true, okay? Now, if I follow that up with all, uh, H 
is more than 20, for example, okay? You'll see that, okay, oh, no, sorry, this, this, is, uh, this does not work. HP, uh, Okay, so if you see this, uh, where HP is like uh, 9, so basically this will return you all the handphone numbers uh, which start with 9. And then, um, yeah. Wait, actually, you know what? No, let's replace that with an 8. So now you know that this for sure will be false, okay? We have previously said that this would be true, right? So a true or a false, in this case, you might think that, okay, um, the first record might still not be printed, but in this case, it actually will be, okay? Um, so let's say if we try to run this, okay, not only do you have these extra other uh, records here, you also have the first call, uh, uh, record as well because it is true for the first part of your um, select statement. Yeah, this is where things get a bit more complicated because you know, like, you kind of have to do a bit of um, like calculation, see whether something's true or false, and then like check whether something's true and true or true and false or things like that. But um, yeah, this this takes a bit of practice uh, to get down. But this is the main idea behind how to use this um, order of conditionals. Uh. yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to something which is slightly more uh, easy, which is uh, let's say if you want to sort out um, certain uh, tables. Okay. So now let's say I have this select statement. Uh, and it prints out uh, this number of records. Okay, cool. I've okay. Sorry, I have no idea why I just did that. Uh, let me try run that again. Oh wait, no, never mind. Okay. Um. So. So yeah, you'll see that uh the record prints out uh these few uh records. Um. And now let's say I want to. Um, order them by something. Not right now, you can see that they're all being um, sorted by their employee ID because, you know, 1 to 11, right? But let's say if I want to sort their records by age, for example, okay? The way to do that is to use order by and then the name of your column. Uh, yeah, so you're fo you'll be following this uh, for, you'll be following this uh, syntax uh, in your, yeah, you'll be following this uh, syntax in your um, command. So you use order by, and then you use uh, the name of your column, which is, um, let's say, yeah, so in this case, we are using, we are ordering by age. So, yeah, and then after that, you follow it up um, with either uh, ascending or descending. Um, yeah, so it's only one or the other. You don't include both or else the program gets confused. Um, so if you try to run this command, you'll see that um, instead of printing out everything um, by employee ID, you'll see that, you know, the order is actually different now. Uh, it's printed out by, um, yeah, it's printed out in, um, in uh, ascending age. And then if you replace this with uh, descending age, then... Yeah, it does the opposite order. Yeah, so this one's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, it can be pretty useful sometimes if you want to find a specific, uh, like how say, if you want to uh, arrange your order, uh, if you want to change the order of the way that your table prints out uh, values. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll quickly run through the last two parts of our. Um, yeah, the last two parts of our, um, of our workshop. Yeah, okay, that works. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the last two parts will be about how to update the current records which are inside your table and how to delete records or delete the table, okay? So, um, yeah, we'll start another, um, actually, you know what? We don't need this select statement anymore. We can. Okay, so our next part will be on how to update. Um, so now let's say uh, um, I want to change my handphone number. Okay, I, I change my handphone number into um, something like uh, 9123456 Okay, 
Um, the way that you'll use this is to... Um, okay, hold on, give me a minute. Okay, so um, the, the format for this, um, yeah, for this record is actually like this. Um, but uh, in this workshop, we'll only just, um, we'll just change one of the columns um, just to make it simple. Uh, so you see that, uh, yeah, so, okay, I'll show you this in the context of this table. So update, uh, in this case, your table name. So it'll be employees set. Okay, then from here, you type in the name of the column that you want to change. So let's say, uh, okay, hold on, give me a minute. Actually, sorry, let's use an, another example, okay? Uh, <laughs> let's say if we want to change the age of all of the um, employees inside our record, okay? So now, the thing is, right, um, okay, um, conventionally, actually, age is not uh, stored inside the database of a, uh, of, uh, yeah, it's actually not stored inside a database because, um, let's say, if uh, you store this information and then next year comes, you realize that actually all the ages have to be increased by one because um, you know people get older, their ages change over time. So the way to deal with that is that actually, let's say, yeah, so most of the time people don't store ages, they store birthdays so that um, they can just calculate the age from the current year and their birthdays. But then the thing is, in this case, we are using age. So um, yeah, let's say just for example, we want to, um, we still want to store the age, right? We, the way we can work around this is, let's say next year comes, we can actually just increase all the ages by one. And there's actually a very easy way you can do that, uh, which is, um, we, we still start off with the same uh, starting command, which is update employee set. But then, um, in this case, you actually use H. Okay, so this one is a bit more, um, how's it? it it gets a bit more technical because I mean this this statement doesn't seem to make much sense now yet because uh you know it, it's trying to tell you okay h is equals to h plus one, um but okay the thing is uh in this case uh how's it in this case right because you are using a set clause over here right this is the one of the special cases where you actually do use assignments in SQL, uh so in this case right. These kinds of assignments actually work very similarly to how they do in Python. Um, so the one on the left will actually be what you insert into. Uh, and then uh, one on the right is what you are going to insert into the left. So in this case, um, the H in the left is the column, is the name of the column that you're inserting into. And then this is the, yeah, uh, this is uh, the information that you're going to insert inside. But the thing is, um, basically, what this H represents in the right side of the assignment is it actually represents the current H of the record. So in this case, right, um, if let, let's say for example we run run this command for the first um, for the first um, part of the table, right? Um, if yeah, so we run this for the first part of the table. Um, the H, my current H is eighteen. Okay, what SQL will actually do is that you will take this eighteen, you will put this here, so. 18 plus 1 is 19, and then you assign this 19 back into H. So this will be updated with 19. Okay? Now let's say if we try to run this command and then we do, um, and then we try to print out, um, and then we try to see what happens to the uh, table after this. Um, okay, we will be using DB Browser to make it more convenient, but. Uh, Okay, so you'll see that, um, yeah, from the previous information that you have uh, inserted inside the table, um, hold on, give me a minute. Yeah, from the previous information that you have inserted, you can actually see the difference in the age over here. Um, 18 has been updated to 19. Uh, 45 has been updated to 46, 35 has been updated to 36, and then so on and so forth. Um, and the thing is, if you run this command again, 
let's say next year comes and then like you need to update the ages again, you can actually um, oops, you can actually run the command again and yeah, it will just keep increasing. So each time you run the command, uh, the age will increase by one, and um, that's roughly how you use the update um, update command in um, in SQLite. Um, we don't have um, enough time to run through everything, but uh, oh, okay, yeah, we don't have uh, enough time to run through everything, but uh, yeah, this is the rough um, rough way you can use update. Okay, so. We'll just quickly run through into the last part of our um, our SQLite workshop, which is um, using the drop tables function. So now let's say we have created this table, um, but uh, I don't know, maybe your company goes bankrupt or something, and they're like, okay, I don't need this table anymore. Uh, I can just drop this table. Uh, yeah, you can use this command called drop tables uh, employees. And what you'll do is, um, you'll just remove the table from a database, and if you run this in your company.db, you can see that your table is gone forever. So yeah, uh, this, this wraps up um, the hands-on exercise of our workshop. But um, yeah, let's see, what else? OK, yeah, we have a challenge over here, actually. But um, yeah, the OK, we won't have time to do this. But um, this will be uploaded onto the Google Drive uh, folder that we have uh, showed you guys. Uh, so if you guys want to try out these challenges, um, yeah, it's on the it's on the Google Drive folder. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's on the yeah. It's you can access it through this for uh, this URL just as a reminder. And uh, yeah, you can find it under challenge and. Um, the database that you're supposed to connect to is here as well with the answers if you want to check them. Um, and yeah, it's, a good, it's good to uh, let yourself uh, practice and uh, see, how, uh, yeah, see how this goes. Um, unfortunately, we won't have uh, time to go through these, uh, this part of the presentation. Uh, sorry for the overrun. But um, yeah, if you would like to, uh, there's actually a YouTube video online that you can uh, see to um, learn more about what this specific um, issue is. Um, but basically, if I have to wrap things up in about a minute, all I can say is basically the way that you write your SQL statements is very important. Uh, sometimes it can be written in a way where it can be very easy for hackers to, to get access to your database just simply by how you type out your SQL codes. Yeah, so... Um, if you want, you can uh, watch this uh, video online. Find out more. It's by Computer File, a very good uh, computing uh, YouTube channel. But uh, yeah. Um, so to wrap up the learning points that uh, we have gone through today, uh, basically, uh, yeah, we've gone through the basics of controlling a database with uh, SQL. And then we've also gone through the basics of Python tree programming using print statements or uh, how, to sh uh, how to use variables and things like that. And um, yeah. This part we didn't really go through, but uh, if you want to find out more, you can uh, go online and search it up. It's actually very interesting. But uh, yeah, with that, uh, we have come to the end of our workshop. Uh, thank you for your time. And, yes, uh, thank yeah. you. Hope yes. you enjoy yourself. <laughs>